Okay, um, guten Tag, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the session about uh, view to thread and uh, pipeline and database operation. Uh, this is me, I work for Oracle. I do product management for um, all the Java connectivity for the database. So including JDBC, which is the most used Java API. You know, if you think about it, it's the most used Java API. You take all the Java APIs, JDBC is the most used. Yeah, because you need persistence, right? And uh, how do you do persistence? Mike, I thought I turned it on. Yeah, yeah, it was on. <laughs> okay. Okay, can you hear me in the back? Yes, okay, so I will uh, repeat. <laughs> good entire, good morning. I work for Oracle, I do product management, Java products, uh, JDBC, the connection pool, and a lot of frameworks such as the... You cannot hear? They still cannot hear me. Hello, 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 can you hear me? Mic check, mic check, mic check. Mic check. Hello, 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 can you hear me? Hello, 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 I think it's working now. It's working now? Yes, I think it's working now. Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm sorry about that. So, <laughs> good, entire, good morning. Uh, product management for uh, uh, the Java APIs for the database, you know, primarily JDBC. I was saying it's the most used Java API because most Java applications need persistence. And uh, how do you do persistence uh, to, JD to database, JDBC? And the connection pool, um, Java frameworks such as the Oracle R2DBC driver, if you are doing you know, reactive, uh, relational reactive database connectivity, um, the um, central config providers, a I mean, lot of open source frameworks, and also the Kubernetes operator for the Oracle database. So, I, and also the Java VM in the database. I don't know if you guys are aware, but we have a JVM in the database since version 8i, 2000. And uh, people use it for tactical operations. For example, if you need to process 80% of your database, you are doing payroll, instead of moving data from storage to the mid-tier, you better move your code near data. That's more efficient if you are processing, you know, a lot of data. Uh, okay, so let's go to the agenda. I uh, will explain what database pipelining are. What are the, the database pipelining? And this is new in uh, Oracle uh, Database 23 AI, which was announced uh, last week, I think. Yeah, it was last week. And uh, so I will explain what it is, why do you want to consider that, and then how do you exploit that in Java. I will uh, start with uh, the reactive extension in, in our JDBC drivers, and then I look at the reactive streams API. We will take um, project reactor in this case, and then uh, view to thread, <laughs> which is completely opposite to the other. And then, uh, how do we exploit that with standard batching? And uh, hopefully, we can take some questions at the end. OK, so what are database pipelining? Uh, traditionally, before pipeline, this is how you interact with the database. You issue a request. The server processes your request. And you are blocked. You are waiting for the server to return. When the server returns, now you make another request. So it's a request, response, request, response. OK? So that's uh, before pipelining. With pipelining, and uh, you can see no pipelining, this is what we do before. And with pipelining, 
you issue your request, it returns immediately, it's queued on the server side, and you can issue another request without waiting for the server to process. Okay, so this way, the server will queue up uh, the requests and will process them first in, first out. And on the client side, you can just keep issuing, sending requests to the database. Okay. So what is the benefit for that? It's uh, predominantly uh, um, uh, fast response time and, uh, and uh, throughput. And this is very useful specifically when your network is, uh, is not, uh, where you don't have a very fast uh, network where the latency is high. You know, so that's, uh, okay, and here we have some data. So these are not uh, official, you know, with the stamp, <laughs> the Oracle stamp, but this is just some internal experimentation, and uh, we are very confident that this is what you get. So you can see here up to 90%, 90% improvement on a fast network. On a fast network, you get up to 90%. On a slow network, um, this can go up to 90x, you know, 90x, you know, 90x. That's, uh, that's huge, right? And so that's for uh, a slow network. Th and that's for queries, if your workload is predominantly queries. Now, for OLTP, it, whether you have a mix of queries and and uh, DML, it's uh, about up to 24% on fast network and uh, 7x on slow network. So the network latency plays a big role. And then if you are doing DML, DML only, wi which means insert, update, delete, it's a uh, it could go up to more than 100 times, more than 100 times, okay? So this is very, uh, it's surprising, <laughs> but it is uh, promising. So there are a lot of reasons to use uh, database pipelining. So the question is, how do you do that in Java? And that's where we will look at uh, uh, those uh, uh, APIs. Okay, so first, okay, now let me explain. I, I need to go back first here. So we say you need to issue the request and it returns immediately, which means on the client side, you need an asynchronous mechanism. You need an API, which is async, you know, async or reactive. Okay, so that's why I'm going to start by showing you what we are calling the JDBC reactive extension. This is something we have done in the JDBC driver since version 21C. So what it is, is a JDBC implementation of Java Util Concurrent Flow, which is uh, an API introduced in J JDK 9. Uh, it has only two interfaces, publisher and subscriber, and uh, you need to do the implementation. But here, the JDBC driver has already done the implementation. So it allows you to make asynchronous call and also uh, providing a non-blocking back pressure. And as you can see on the picture, it is implemented on top of the JDBC driver. Right, okay, so if I show you the API, and, and we are not the only vendor who are doing extension to JDBC, you know, Postgres, uh, all those, everybody extend the JDBC API because the API does not meet all the requirements. So uh, we, 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 we go after uh, JDBC uh, API. So if you look at uh, the reactive extension APIs, it's exactly like JDBC with async Oracle at the end. Okay, if you look at the uh, uh, execute async Oracle, execute update, execute batch, you know, so those are mimic, we mimic the JDBC APIs and we add, we added async Oracle. So I async because async and Oracle just in case the JDBC 
specification, you know, the body who controlled the JDBC API, just if they decided to come up with something similar, we put Oracle at the end to avoid the conflict with uh, their API. But I think they did not, and I don't think they will ever, <laughs> because um, they told us the Java scalability, you know, virtual thread is the future of Java scalability. So I don't think uh, the J Java SE people will ever go back to do a, a, you know, beyond what is already there, which is the Java util concurrent flow. I don't think they will go back to implement something which is uh, asynchronous or whatever. So anyway, so if we look at the code, this is a code sample. Uh, it's not complete, but it gives you an idea. And you can see here, so we s this is a pipeline example, and we have a, a statement, you know, delete statement, delete from example where blah, 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 and delete um, or insert and a query. So we have three, three prepared statements. And when we say delete publisher equal delete unwrap blah 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 unwrap is how you get to the extension you get a connection you need to go to the, if you want to access the extension you need to unwrap that connection object and this is what everybody do you know like you take a postgres for example you want to use the postgres extension you get a connection you need to unwrap to access the extension so when you access the extension and you can issue, execute, update uh, async Oracle. It returns a publisher. So it returns immediately, but you get a publisher, a handle. Uh, so you can issue another request. And you can see here we have the insert, uh, execute, update async for the insert, and then execute query async for the query. So we have now three publishers. And uh, it's not shown on the slide, but subscribers will use those publishers and wait for the database to respond. So the driver will monitor, uh, you know, it will use a selector to monitor the response from back from the database. It, we do not poll. I think the, the selector is, if something happens, the selector will let you know. So from using callback mechanism, the client who holds the publishers will receive a notification and then will get the result set from the database. So this is how using the reactive extension, you can use database pipelining. You can issue, 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 and then wait to collect the, re the, the response. So you can consume the response asynchronously from the database. Okay. So let me use another uh, API. This time it's going to be the Reactive Streams APIs. Uh, so Reactive Streams are async with non-blocking back pressure. And uh, you know Project Reactor. You probably have heard about uh, Aka Streams or Rx Java, Vertex. Uh, I think Spring also have, uh, they have a Reactive uh, API. So, and, and R2DBC, you know, all the vendors, all the database vendors have R2DBC. So the blue box is a representation of the Reactive Streams API or libraries, and we implement them on top of our Reactive extension. <laughs> so if you use a project reactor with uh, Oracle JDBC, at, Internally, you are using our reactive extension, which I showed you in the previous slide. Uh, so the picture is saying you can use a synchronous blocking call directly to the database, uh, but that will not work with uh, pipelining because pipeline requires an async mechanism, right? So then you have to use either the reactive extension or a Reactive Streams uh, 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 libraries, uh, so such as R2DBC or Reactive Streams or um, uh, Project Reactor or um, uh, Aka Streams. And this is an example with Project Reactor. So what this code is showing is that we have a, a select statement, okay, select ID, blah, 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 
So the flux is uh, a type, a, st a streaming type, which returns several elements. Uh, whereas a mono is a stream type, which returns one element. So this is from Project Reactor. So what we're doing here is we, are, we have a prepared statement, and uh, we are executing the, the prepared statement with the published query. Published query will execute the statement. We'll return the result set as a mono, okay? And then we will flat map the mono to get the, the rows. Be when you have a result set, you need to pull the, res the rows from the database. So that's what flat map is doing. We are pulling the result set uh, from, we are pulling the results, you know, f f using the result set object. Sorry about that. Uh, so, so then we close the prepare statement and the subscriber will wait for the database to return the rows and we just print the rows. So the subscriber will use this uh, uh, row string, uh, subscribe row string, it will just print the rows it will receive from the publisher, okay? And in the bot at the bottom, this is an insert. An insert returns a count. When you do an insert or when you do an update, the database tells you or delete how many rows have been inserted or updated or deleted. So you receive only one, uh, it's, a <laughs> it's a one object. So this is a mono. We don't need a flex here. So we have a prepare statement, we have the publish update, which will execute the prepare statement, we return the mono, uh, we close the statement, and then the subscriber will take the insert count and then print the rows. Print how many rows have been inserted, that's what it does. Okay. So this is how you can exploit uh, uh, pipelining using Reactive Streams API. Okay, so we have seen APIs that use, that has reactive or, or, or async mechanisms. What about virtual thread? <laughs> virtual thread is not async and is not reactive. And remember what they said, the future of Java scalability is virtual thread, which means they, they don't want you to go into the difficulty of reactive streams programming. You know, it's not trivial especially if you want to debug and things like that. Learning curve is steep. So the promise of read to thread is you just use your traditional um, procedural programming. And uh, by the fact that we can afford to have millions of view to thread if we want to, <laughs> we can we can sacrifice uh, threads. You know, we don't need to play a game with threads by, you know, having a thread pool and trying to save, you know, from the user thread. So the user thread will see asynchronous, but in the, rea the real, in the reality, you still have a thread pool and you are using the thread pool so that the user thread does not see uh, the problem. But with virtual thread, we don't care. You know, you can waste whatever, how many threads you want. It doesn't matter. So what we are showing here is that uh, a, 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 a traditional programming and view to thread, it's, it's, it's only a matter of how you declare you know, your code to the JVM. So at the top, we are using platform thread. And in the bottom, we are using view to thread. So you can see it's only a matter of telling the JVM that this code here is uh, using a virtual thread. So nothing, uh, nothing, uh, nothing uh, uh, particular. And the JDBC has been supporting uh, uh, the virtual thread since version 21. We've been following the, the spec and adapting to the spec. And so we have made some changes into the driver. For example, we replace all the synchronous blocks by Java util concurrent locks, reentrant lock, to avoid what is known as thread pinning, which is where if you are running in a synchronous block, you don't relinquish the platform thread because all the virtual threads, you know, they compete for the platform thread in order to execute. So if you are if somebody is 
is keeping the platform thread, it will stop all the other virtual thread. So that's, uh, they call this thread pinning. So we make the changes to the driver to avoid that. And I, I have some more in my blog. So, okay, so, so, okay, how do we deal with the situation where we want to use virtual thread? thread but we don't have an asynchronous mechanism. Okay, so we have to we have to use one. <laughs> we have to use one, and here we are using we are using. Okay, so this is sort of a demonstration of capaci capability. You know, it's not how people should do it, but at the end of the day, you need an async mechanism, even if you want to use it to thread. So we are using. The reactive extension at the top, okay, to execute the statement, you know, to issue the request. So we are sending the request to the database and it returns immediately. So we have all the publishers. Now, in order to consume the result set, instead of consuming the result set asynchronously as we have done in the previous cases, you know, where we were using the reactive extension or, or uh, project uh, reactor, we decided to use uh, project reactors mechanism, you know, the, the, the subscriber. Okay, so we use the mono, we get the, the, the count, but we block. We block because we want to block until the database is back. So when the database is back, we will print how many rows have been deleted. So we are consuming the results synchronously. Okay. Uh, we can afford to block because it's a virtual thread. If we block, it doesn't matter. Somebody else will be using the platform thread while we are waiting for the database to return. And same thing for the insert. We block when the insert uh, returns the hom how many rows have been inserted. Uh, we will uh, print uh, that number. And the same thing for the queries. So it, it we are mixing... Um, APIs here, but the thing is, virtual thread are not APIs per se. You know, it's just uh, telling the VM how you want to, to do the, your thing. Yeah, there is a question. So, so like this, can we only block this one virtual thread? Uh, yes, I mean, it's the, same, it's the same thread. It's the same thread. There is no asynchronicity, there is no parallelism. It's a sequential. So, we're going to block. Uh, on to wait for the returns of the delete, and then on 20, we block waiting for the return of the insert, and uh, 25, we block waiting for the return of the query. So, I hope that clarifies. Uh, Okay, last section, and then we take uh, questions. Uh, we are okay. Oh, we have plenty of time. Okay, so how do we do with batch JDBC batch? So here, this is just a JDBC driver doing uh, <laughs> doing <laughs> doing some trick under the cover. So you use the JDBC API. You use add batch or a statement add batch or, or uh, you know statement or prepare statement at batch. This is how you do batching, right? So what we're doing here is we are we are doing asynchronicity under the cover. Uh, you did not ask for it. We are just doing it for you uh, just to speed up the batch execution. So we will send all the, the, the rows, all the statements in a pipeline and the pipeline will execute. So the JDBC driver will block and wait for the returns before returning uh, to you, before returning control to the, to the API. Uh, so this is something that is tempting. It is so tempting that uh, one of those uh, persistence uh, framework, they asked us if we can make this uh, for all the JDBC APIs, you know, uh, allow people to use synchronous programming, JDBC, and under the cover, the driver will turn all the JDBC APIs into async. And we say, well, <laughs> we don't know, we're going to think about it. Uh, uh, something might come from, I don't know if a structure concurrency can be used. I have not yet looked into this in details, 
but uh, this is what is uh, what people are asking, which is, you know, can you can you um, can you make uh, all the JDBC APIs asynchronous under the cover? Uh, okay, so that's all I have. We I will take question, of course, and this is just a list, a short list of things that uh, you might not be aware that. Uh, uh, the Oracle JDBC driver support, I mean for Java development, and the first one, uh, view to thread, okay, we already talked about it, reactive extension, we talked about it, out to DBC, Graal VM, native image, vector search, we have now support for AI vector search, uh, which is a new thing in Oracle Database uh, 23 AI, which was announced uh, last week. Um, so I'm not going to talk about vector <laughs> search AI here, but uh, we do support it. We support the type, new vector type, and uh, new JDBC APIs. And then uh, the JVM in the database, I already talked about it, the connection pool, uh, support for sharding in Spring and uh, native uh, and open telemetry. Those are uh, those are uh, uh, open source uh, frameworks that we are providing. And uh, you can reach me on my Slack or tweet, Twitter. But we want to take questions. So if I can get the slide, though, I don't know if you can see. Oh, there are questions. Okay, how? Okay, so th here are the question. How would I handle transactions when using pipelining? Well, the same way you, you handle it today, you know. Pipelining is just a, a way of um, sending the request and not waiting. So in your transaction, for example, you have three insert and then the commit, right? So you, you issue your request. Insert, 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 commit, and then you wait for, you know, you depending on which API you are using, you wait for the response from the database. So it's uh, the same way. Um, what is the difference by just using reactive streams uh, in app through multiple connection, but not using database reactive extension in JDBC level, like uh, slide uh, 15, I think it was, uh, uh, slide 16, I don't know what this was about. Um, so what is the difference? Just using reactive streams uh, through multiple connection, but not using database reactive extension. OK, so if you are not using, I don't know how you can, OK, you are not using the reactive extension. But the thing is, if you are using Project Reactor against the Oracle database, and you are using our JDBC driver. Uh, I think at the end of the day, you will be using the reactive extension because the the, the project reactor API. You know how do do you access the JDBC? Uh, uh, it so what I'm trying to say is project reactor. You, we provide you a an, a class because Project Reactor, or Arca Streams, or Java, uh, uh, Rx Java, they all use Org Reactive Streams API, and we can map those easily to Java Util Concurrent Flow API. So that's how you can use our Reactive Extension through uh, Project Reactor. Now the question is, if I'm not using your Reactive Extension, uh, yeah, it will work because in the past we did not have the reactive extension and people were still using uh, Project Reactor with our JDBC driver. So the question is, what is the difference? Well, the difference is uh, you will have to uh, do more coding in, on your side if we're not using our reactive extension. Okay, So when using reactive streams, how would I access the generated keys when only the insert count is returned? So how do you access the generated keys uh, when only the count is uh, returned? 
Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I need to think, <laughs> think about or maybe follow up. Okay. Uh, when using, how would I say? Okay, I already uh, addressed that. Is there a pattern to display partial result? Imagine a progress bar for the client. So that has nothing to do with the react or the pipelining. Uh, this is uh, something people have been asking for a while, which is showing the prog uh, pro progress bar when consuming the result set. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the Oracle database does not uh, do that. You have to pull, you know, we, we, we wait f when the it's complete and then we pull. It's not like database is sending you the results as it's uh, processing, okay? So when it's complete, then you can retrieve the result set. Uh, is the, does prepare statement trigger a database interaction? Uh, it does in terms of execution. <laughs> the first time, it does a lot more because you need to parse. Okay? And then, but if you are using prepare statement, if you have a bind, a bind has an interaction, and the execution also has an interaction with the database. Okay, slide uh, uh, when the execution of delete publisher is started at line, it does it start at line 4 or at line 15? So slide 19, the execution of delete publisher is started. Well, um, so when you issue the statement, the database put them in a queue, first in, first out. So I cannot tell you when exactly it starts processing because it's in the queue. When it's done with the first one, it will take the second one. So I don't know exactly when. But at the end of the day, it will, it will uh, process everything in the queue. How is the connection pool managed behind database pipelining? Will it create... Uh, I cannot see the rest of the question has disappeared. Um, connection pool with pipelining. Well, uh, <laughs> is there is no change because you are using your connection. You know, pipelining or not, you are using the connection you get from the pool. So there is no change. The only thing I can think of is uh, reactively or asynchronously getting a connection from the pool and we have done that in the latest version of the driver. I mean, the latest version, which is Oracle 23 AI. The connection pool now support reactive uh, or asynchronous mechanism, but it's just to get the connection. So, but once you get the connection, pipelining or not, it makes no difference. Uh, we can take question from the, the room because I think it's on Slido. It's, uh, there is no more question on Slido. Yes, please. Um, so, uh, Inga, can you show up the slide again with the, the virtual threads? Right? Okay, okay, yes. Okay. So, there you have 1,500 virtual threads. In each of them, has their own data image, right? E okay, no, it's the same code. We are just using, it's the same, it's the same code, it's the same connection. Oh, before this one. Yeah, this one, uh, yes, I think uh, uh, it's the same connection. I see. Okay. Yeah. And also, what is the pool history term? What is, does it, uh, do, 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 so input stream, range map, oh, two list, oh, okay, so the two. <laughs> uh, I took this example from my colleague, I, I did not write this code. Uh, what does it return? So you qu the query. So we are printing the query, and yes. Yeah, so why do we need the two list? Yeah, I don't know. Any other question? Uh, we still have eleven minutes. Uh, if there is no more question, thank you very much. Oh, okay, there is one here. Yeah. Yes. Do not support 
Chart 21. Only That's right. Only the 23 drivers support Chart 21, but the 23 drivers are supported for production only on OCI. The, the cloud infrastructure? Yes. Okay. So outside of OCI, there is no way to use virtual threads because the 21 drivers support virtual threads, but yeah. they support 21. And the 23 drivers are not supported for production outside of OCI. Okay, so the question is, um, Java 21, it's, I mean, virtual thread is only permanent in Java 21, but the JDBC driver version 21, not to be confused, because there is a difference between the JDK version and the database release. W you know, when I say JDBC 21, I'm talking about JDBC release as part of the database version 21. So that could be confusing for people. We, we certify, okay, so there are two ways we release the, the JDBC driver. There is, when we release the driver and there is a new JDK, there are new JDKs, we certify, you know, we run them, but we do not recompile the driver against the new JDKs. Oracle J uh, version 21 drivers, okay, which support v thread on Java 21. And we opened an SR, and the SR got rejected because the Oracle 21 drivers do not support Java 21. Yeah, because, uh, okay, this is where we get into the Oracle release uh, mechanism. There is something they call the innovation release, and then we have long-term support releases. So 21, Oracle Database release 21 and the JDBC and everything under that release are innovation and are supported for two years only, you know, it's short term. And that's why we did not compile it with JDK 21. It's not the compilation. Yeah, it's... it's support. You cannot file... You cannot file service requests. Yeah, because it's an uh, innovation release and uh, oh I'm getting... Because the, you can file service requests against the 21 drivers, but not when running Java 21, <laughs> only when running Java 17. Yeah, and so the question is, they were told by support that they cannot uh, file a service request against a JDBC 21 using JDK 21. And uh, my response, knowing how things work internally, is because 21 JDBC 21 is an innovation release, we did not certify against JDK 21. That's why they do not allow you, they do not allow you to file a service request. And can't migrate to 23 drivers because they're not supported for production. Uh, 23 AI is supported for production. Yes, only on OCI, yes. So the 23 AI release is half, half uh, release because it's not uh, generally available. It's not uh, on premises. It's not, you know, yeah, I, I, I hear you. I, I completely understand. Yeah. <laughs> Apologize for the inconvenience, but that's beyond my pay grade, <laughs> of course. <laughs> any, any other question? Yes, please. Uh, this one? No, Vito Fred is not used. Uh, oh, Vito Fred is used. Well, it's uh, the code, you know. It's I'm not showing the complete code. Uh, in the code, you just declare that you are using Vito Fred. That's it. You know, like this here. Like here where you tell the JVM I'm using Vito Fred at the bottom. Here, you, need ju you just need to tell the JVM that you are using Vito Fred. Exactly. That's right. Je te rappelle, je te rappelle. Je suis encore en conférence. Sorry. 
Jeez. Okay, I'll co sorry, I apologize for that. Uh, um, I think uh, the question is answered. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any other question? Okay, thank you very much. Till next time. <laughs>